So uh, now we are going to be uh, listening to a uh, SIP-based group chat with Limfam, um, Simon Morlat. Okay, thank you. Okay, is audio working good for everyone? Yeah, okay. So I'm Simon Morla, uh, original author of the Linfone software. So Linfone is a soft phone, a software uh, that you can run on now any platform to make audio and video calls over the internet and you have uh, instant messaging as well. So just to give you a bit of history about the project, so I started to write this project in 2001 uh, it was a spare time activity and I was uh, finishing my studies actually and um, so I did this because um, it was lacking something in Linux to make audio calls so I released the very first release um, very basic audio calls under GPL v2 license and the minimalist GTK uh, interface and then I continued the project on spare time and in 2006 I added video calls and I ported the software to a Windows operating system. In 2010 I had the opportunity to create a company that I called Beldon Communication um, whose purpose uh, was to um, uh, dedicate full-time um, development effort on uh, Linfone software. So the basic business model is dual licensing, GPL and proprietary support to our customers and um, developing um, specific development or customizations for our customers. And then the development uh, went uh, very fast in the next years and in 2011 we ported the software to iOS and Android with video call. In 2012, uh, we launched a free SIP service that could be used as a reference to run Linfone. Uh, it's based on a soft new software that we have introduced that is called FlexiSIP, and it's a SIP server. I will tell a few words about it later. And in, during the years, uh, the next years, we uh, largely improved the user interface of uh, mobile editions of Linfone. We added IM with delivery notifications and many security features. And last year, we launched a brand new interface of the Linfone application for the desktop, Mac, Linux, and Windows based on Qt. And this year, we're about to launch new releases for Android and iOS incorporating group chat and that will be my focus today because group chat is not something that has been widely used, uh, widely implemented over SIP and I think Linfone will be the first in the open source world. So group chat, what it means? It means that you're able to create multiple participants to designate administrators. You can later add or remove participants a group chat as an undefined lifetime. Um, of course, on the server side, you have to deal with store and forward because the clients are not always connected to the network. You need delivery notification, file transfer, and uh, in some cases, you want to have a high level of security and then you need end-to-end -end data protection. So this is basically what applications like WhatsApp or Messenger um, uh, are doing in the use case actually. So when starting this project we of course knew that most of this was already done in XMPP so um, we have this question of course of why not using XMPP for doing all that stuff and so actually I did this slide to give you small elements of comparison between the two protocols there was, they were um, born, um, I would say, around the same years in the early 2000s, but um, XMPP targeted at first instance messaging, and so it is very well established in this field. Uh, on its side, uh, SIP was a protocol for initiating uh, any kind of session, but in practice, most, most implementation targeted audio and video calls and it was very um, well established in audio and video call fields. So SIP has evolved lately to instant messaging and I would say that uh, there are some attempts for uh, proposing RFCs to um, 
to, to, about how to implement instant messaging, but for the moment it's quite confusing about what to use. Uh, SIP has the advantage of being quite modular on server side, while XMPP has a rather monolithic design. And finally, uh, XMPP has now audio and video, but it, um, it's quite new, actually. So our choice was to continue with SIP uh, for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it was that our company has uh, many clients and also an end-user base that uh, uh, expects Linfone to run on top of SIP. The idea of um, mixing an XMPP stack and a SIP stack within the same software had several drawbacks to us. Um, so first of all, the dramatic increase in the amount of code to include in the project and the duplication um, of TLS connection to communicate uh, with the two protocols. The authentication uh, management username and password would be duplicated too. The server infrastructure would have to be duplicated. And for us as a company, uh, we will duplicate some expertise to be able to troubleshoot the full system. So we considered that they were actually at IETF and also uh, the specification made by operators, uh, GSM RCS for rich communication system. Uh, both of them offer solution for group chat. So we uh, pick up uh, ideas from that and we, are, we have implemented uh, their recommendation. So uh, well, finally, one of the, two, uh, the, the next reason we have for keeping SIP is that we have heavily invested in, on SIP for simple instant messaging between two participants. And so we don't want to lose this work and it's actually uh, working pr pretty well. And lastly, um, if we were able to perform a conference for text, we'll be also able to leverage on the code to perform audio and video conference. So here is basically how in SIP uh, we can expect to do uh, group chat. For, so of course SIP is responsible for session establishment, so we'll use the very famous invite request to create uh, the conference. So basically uh, it's a dialogue between a client and a conference server. There is an RFC called Conferencing for User Agent that gives a very interesting call flows in order to uh, uh, set up a conference on a conference server. Um, there is an RFC that expresses the way to give a list of participants to a conference server. Uh, the uh, RFC called Grooves helps in identif identifying devices which is absolutely required for end-to-end -end encryption. In, for group chat, we need a way to notify the client about events of the group, like somebody has joined the group, somebody has left the group, somebody has been designated administrator. And for this, we have uh, two RFCs published at IETF. So first one is the generic subscribe notify uh, SIP request, which gives uh, uh, um, um, the basic behavior for uh, uh, subscribe notify like PubSub in XMPP actually. And uh, SIP event package for conference tests state, sorry, um, gives an XML dialect to represent the state of a conference. For message transport, uh, there, are, um, um, there is the MSRP protocol that is recommended to uh, send uh, text and files. Uh, there is also the SIP message request but it's considered as obsolete. And the RCS specification um, defines a protocol, simple protocol with HTTP post and get in order to um, exchange uh, files between two clients. And finally, we need a few more RFCs for auxiliary messages. So um, message format with metadata with a CPIM instant message disposition notification, which is, in other words, uh, the fact that you are able to, to tell, uh, uh, to see that uh, um, someone you, you send a message to has received the message and later has read the message. 
an indication of message composition that we call uh, is composing the, no, the, the fact that you know when someone is typing some text so in green what we have implemented um, the red cross is actually for MSRP so we decided not to go for the moment with the MSRP because yeah it has some advantages like being very simple it has built-in store and forward capability and it allows to separate signaling path from the message transport path but for us it was yet another protocol to implement yet another connection the client has to make uh, we need to uh, have integration with push notification services as well uh, for MSRP because actually um, now mobile devices are not able to have permanent connections with servers so you are required to go through push notification service in order to uh, wake up a device to receive something and our FlexiSIP software uh, remember FlexiSIP is our SIP proxy server um, actually uh, does all the job we need for um, transporting text over SIP message so we decided to leverage on this and move forward so here is the big picture about our architect architecture so here we see that we have uh, three clients Bob, Alice and John that are connected to a FlexiSIP proxy server which is uh, over SIP TLS so the proxy main task is of course user authentication, uh, DOS attacks protection, registration, integration with iOS and Android push services and of course a proxy has to route any kind of request to uh, the user agent or to other proxies. This proxy uh, is connected to a registration database um, which uh, for now in our case we choose uh, the Redis uh, distributed hash table and uh, our FlexiSIP conference server then runs on a protected network behind the FlexiSIP proxy server and this is the part that will uh, manage all the conference so it needs of course a persistent uh, database in order to store information about the groups that have been created by the clients and all the related events of the group about participants that uh, uh, um, entered or leave the conference so I will finish this presentation by give you a few examples of SIP messages so that you can basically understand how it works. So this is an invite request um, that, um, that is created by a user called Mary that wants to initiate a group with Laure and Pauline. So this invite is sent to a special SIP address called Conference Factory which is the address in order to create a new conference. So it says that Mary wants to initiate a conference whose subject is about colleagues and he sees the list in uh, some XML dialect that says that uh, there are two people invited in this conference which are Laure and Pauline with their SIP sorry, addresses. The server immediately responds by saying that okay I allocated a new chat room, a conference room for this user whose un CP URI is given here and note the is focus parameter which is the standard way in SIP to signal to a user agent that he is now uh, contacting um, a, a conference, be part of a conference actually. So finally uh, a new invite is sent this time to the newly allocated conference uh, and saying that Laure and Pauline are uh, invited and later if we want to add more participants we can put more people in this list. Of course the conference server has to uh, inform uh, Laure and Pauline that they are invited, that they are uh, requested to join this conference so for that we use the refer message, the refer request of the C protocol with a refer to header that gives to the to Laure and Pauline the unique SIP um, address of the conference. In order to receive um, information about what is happening in this group, each client sends a subscribe message to the unique uh, conference address uh, in order to receive events about the conference. 
then the server, the conference server, is expected, oh, it's a bit small, <laughs> a notify message in which it will give a description of the conference. So this is a full description, but later uh, for a participant being added or removed, then um, uh, there will be partial notification. So this XML dialect uh, gives the subject, gives the list of participants, Mary, uh, Laure, and Pauline. And we can see that actually user Pauline has two devices with different IDs. And so every client has a full visibility of which other participants and devices are part of the conference. In order to leave a conference, you say bye, like in any SIP session. So here is um, our roadmap for the next month. Um, so we'll uh, be re releasing iOS and Android on the um, betas on the, uh, on the stores. Uh, so it's open to every user. Um, and then uh, we'll make, uh, if, if, if everything goes well, the uh, final release uh, around March. We uh, plan to add uh, uh, device, uh, um, well, device to device uh, data protection, so encryption of uh, uh, text, uh, what we call Lime V2 for Linfone uh, instant messaging encryption around May. We'll release the full source code of the FlexiSIP conference server under Ethereum GPL V3 around July, and we plan around in September. Um, a new release of the Linfone desktop application incorporating uh, group chat uh, as well. And lastly, we have uh, in mind some future work, um, so optimization work in order to better handle uh, connection and disconnection, which are frequent in mobile environments, and we want to minimize the number of SIP requests uh, being used to uh, um, to perform this conference uh, use cases. And we have in mind to uh, write down a kind of best practice, best practice uh, RFC that we could submit to IETF in order to um, propose our solution uh, to the world. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Actually, uh, we, uh, so the, let me uh, say the question again. The question is about uh, which uh, kind of uh, techniques or standards we are going to use the, for end-to-end um, -end, uh, data protection in the messaging. So um, our ID, um, so first of all, we, we conduct a study of what existed like uh, in a signal protocol. Um, and uh, we found as well the OMEMO uh, standard, uh, which is used by XMPP, and it is uh, an XCP uh, being uh, currently uh, engineered at uh, XMPP level. And then uh, we decided to go with a very similar approach with, uh, I think, exactly the same uh, curves, which don't come from uh, the NIST. So I would say there's nothing very uh, original in our solution, but it. I think has never been uh, implemented uh, with SIP, so I, this could be part as well of uh, an RFC or something we could uh, document to the world. So, uh, so, yes, of course. Um, the question is, is there any way uh, to connect to our server's infrastructure or to have Linfone uh, being able to connect over WebSocket, which is actually the transport being used by WebRTC and 
um, JavaScript uh, uh, SIP stack like GSHIP? So the answer is no. Our FlexiSIP proxy does not have any WebSocket transport. Um, but this is something that we are sometimes asked by our customers. So maybe it will happen uh, someday. I would say that our company um, is quite small. We are 12, around 12 people. And we have lots of work to do with Linfone, our FlexiSIP, and all the media streamer engine uh, that is uh, running uh, with it. And, and so we don't have um, much uh, expertise on WebRTC. <laughs> Any other question? So the question is about uh, the compatibility between Linfone and other kind of SIP servers. So the answer is that uh, for uh, um, uh, audio, audio and video calls, um, Linfone is compatible with SIP and is then, uh, by consequence, compatible with any kind of SIP server, for, um, which is specific to the conference uh, service, chat conference. I would say that for the moment, uh, at my knowledge, there is no at least open source implementation of a conference server uh, being able to do uh, instant messaging. So I think it's too early to, uh, to answer this question. But the idea is that with Linfone and FlexiSIP, we'll put on the table the reference implementation and uh, work, SIP workflows um, that are that practically work for uh, doing uh, IAM conferences, and so we expect that uh, other uh, SIP proxy or SIP server implementation will follow a path similar to us. Thank you.